We are back. You are chatting with John P. Today, I am going to be covering some watch brands that I believe really understand watch collectors. Today, there's so many watch brands out there. You have the prestigious brands, you have the, the Holy Trinity, and as well as you have all these micro brands that are popping up every day. Some of these brands truly understand watch geeks like us, like you. And if you are a watch geek, please do not forget the thumbs up, like, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Some understand us, some don't. And these, I believe, truly do, and I'll give examples of why. Also, I'd like to mention, please check out delraywatch.com, my site where Federico and I buy, sell, and trade luxury watches. We've got a whole bunch of extremely cool luxury watches we just brought in from the Miami Watch so Show, so make sure to check those out there. And also, he's aggressively priced a whole handful, maybe close to 20% of our site in the hot deals section with honestly some really great buys that I might add to my personal collection. So let's jump right into the first brand that I think truly understands us as Watch Geek, and that is Omega. Now, when we think about Omega in history, they were really just your run-of-the-mill watch company. But I'd say in the last 10 to 15 years, as watches have become more of a hobby and less of a luxury good for some, as well as less of a utility because of things like the iPhone. And by the way, I am wearing an Omega, an Omega Seamaster ceramic bezel last gen, which I will be releasing a video about my experience on the wrist for one full month coming uh, coming soon. Uh, but I think Omega just does a wonderful job at really understanding that watches are a hobby. Think about it. We're on the internet. We're on YouTube. We're talking about these things in the comments below. We're trading them. We're trading up. We're trading down. Something new. Something used. This is a hobby. No other way to put it. Sure, they're luxury items, but you know what I mean. And when Omega listens to the watch community and they come out with watches that are powered by the legendary 321 movement, and movements are something that I think most of us watch geeks are drawn to watches for in the first place is the inside components and mechanics of the watches. When Omega focuses on that and they push it to the forefront of their brand and not necessarily about how cool the watches will make you look or about how you know luxurious the whole experience is, but when they put that movement on the homepage of their website, that shows their commitment in my opinion, to the watch geek community because the average guy is not going to care about the 321 movement. The guy that buys a Rolex Daytona because it's a Rolex is not going to care necessarily about that 321 movement. And by the way, I was asked, do I think it's going to affect the Daytona sales? Absolutely not. And for that reason, Omega also has different parties and events where you can take pictures in front of the astronauts, which they also have in their boutiques, of course, the astronauts that come along with the whole space theme that Omega focuses around, dark side of the moon, gray side of the moon, uh, white side of the moon, all of their sides of the, how many sides of the moon can there possibly, can there really possibly be? But they really hone in on that, they focus, and they develop that niche inside the watch collector community, and they do just a great job with it, in my opinion. I could, it, I'm really starting to sound like an Omega fanboy. I'll move on to Moser because also a big fan of Moser. I think that H. Moser does a great job at really targeting watch geeks, collectors, and savants. And let me explain myself. So Moser has limited production. Everything is in-house, and, and one of Moser's companies also produces things like the, uh, the mainsprings for other brands. So Moser does a great job at also focusing on the movements. The majority of their watches also feature display case backs where you can see the, the, the finely finished decorated movements, which of course, I'm saying movements all day, but movements really do make up a large chunk of what drives at least myself as a watch geek to these pieces. And when we consider that Moser's generally have very, you know, primitive, basic, really simply aesthetically yet pleasing uh, dials, it really forces you to look at the back. And whenever anyone has made a compliment about my Moser in uh, my white gold, my my uh, H Moser Mayu, I always had to hand them the watch so they can see the movement because on the face, Mosers typically look pretty plain, but when you flip it over, you're instantly impressed with all the angling, the different types of finishing, so on and so forth. So I think Moser does a great job. Also what I think they do a great job with is their trendy content and 
yeah, sure, they're they're trying to go viral on some of the stuff, like the, the Swiss cheese watch that they made, as well as the um, the living watch that was made out of, like, greenery and shrubs or something like that at, at a recent um, watch fair some, some time back. And also, they've come out with kind of trendy, cool advertisements taking pokes at Patek Philippe about handing your watch down to your son and how, you know, a, a Moser owner would never do that because the, son, the, the sons are, like, running around partying with, with women and stuff like that. So I think that Moser does a really great job of being modern, trendy, and innovative, and that's what a lot of watch geeks really like today, in my opinion. Of course, what is a watch list without Zinn? I think that Zinn does a great job at focusing on watch collectors and true watch geeks that care about the utility value in the watch. So while utility value might not be there for the average consumer outside of what hardcore watch collectors, when we talk about watch collecting, Value is always a conversation to be had. Lots of value in watches like this, as well as Zinn. Now, Zinn, they make hardcore watches that you can truly use as professional instruments. Now, when we look at an example like the 565 Sea King, which we actually have at DelrayWatch.com, you can see that Zinn likes to focus on these limited production runs, which also kind of convey something special to the collector, right? You don't have your run-of-the-mill watch. So the guy that wants the Rolex Samariner that's the same as everyone else's is not necessarily the guy that wants the Zinn watch, especially the limited edition. When we consider the 356 uh, chronograph that they made for the Hourglass, the 356 was a chronograph that's been out there for some time in different versions. But this one is very specific and special for that authorized dealer in Asia and they made a blasted dial that looks really weathered. It looks special. It has the red and the contrast with the gray and the off-white. I think it looks incredible. And when you consider that Zinn is very well respected by watch collectors for the quality of the watches as well as putting workhorse movements that are proper, properly regulated into their watches, I think that Zinn is a no-brainer. Leave in the comments below if you like Zinn and definitely thumbs up if you do as well because I know the comment section is going to be flooded with Zinn collectors and honestly, Zinn is a brand that is growing on me every day for this reason. Next, of course, this brand is, is higher end and I'll admit it can be alienating to some, but this also attracts a different type of collector, more of an art focused collector and this is fp jorn now fp jorn is also a newer brand i believe it was founded in the early 90s by one man francois paul jorn and these these watches originally were all created by him now there's you know there's a team of people and certain watches are are worked on by him himself but these watches have really gained a lot of steam and notoriety in the last handful of years, maybe five years, since a lot of media outlets have been pushing them, but also the quality is there. To give you an example, the FP Journ Chronomet Blue, which everyone loves because of that very specific blue colored dial, which is blue is very hot right now, but the way that you kind of tilt it in the light and there's different shades, it's almost endless shades of blue and that's really attractive. When you flip it over, you can see the beautiful movements that FP Journ is really known for. Now, I will admit that some of the FP Journ movements, especially the older FP Journ movements do suffer from some consistency problems because there are a lot of precious metals involved, but in modern day production, a lot of the movements are really rock solid. But when we look at it in terms of collectors, the brand does shine because there's extremely limited production and they just don't make anymore. And that's kind of their catch, right? So if you want one of their higher end pieces, that's even more limited production in you know, tens of pieces, sometimes even less, you kind of have to prove to the brand that you're going to be a strong advocate for that watch and wear it and you know take care of it and not flip it. And you have to prove to them even more than you would prove to Rolex that you deserve uh, a Hulk. And, and I don't really mean it in a negative way as deserve, but they really want a strong community of FP Journ collectors and there's little groups and clubs and meetups and exclu exclusive events that they invite you to. So I know this is a little bit different of a tier of watch and it does alienate some, but they kind of focus on their tiny little niche and I think that's 
that is extremely important when there are thousands of watch brands to know your niche and really hone in on it. And lastly, let's talk about Zenith. I think in the last five years, Zenith has done an amazing job at kind of reinventing themselves using their past, their history, the legendary El Primero movement. Once again, movements, watch guys like movements. They focus on the El Primero. They make different iterations of it. And at the same time, while they have that line of in the, in the track of traditional watches, that they've kind of reinvented and brought back to the scene. You also have this other parallel track where they're really coming, becoming really modern and really cutting edge and trying to kind of bring watches into the younger consumer, the, the consumer that maybe doesn't want to wear a Patek Philippe because it's too traditional. And so while Zenith has traditional offerings, they also have these partnerships with Bamford example. They have partnerships with Land Rover, Range Rover, so on and so, so forth. Swiss Beats, which is a music producer slash musical artist um, in kind of uh, the R&B rap hip hop scene. And so just showing that Zenith is willing to kind of have these two verticals and focus on the traditional background that they had, including the Zenith El Primero movement, and incorporate some of these things to make an entirely different product using the Swiss Beats and kind of their Hublot-esque lineup, albeit a good watch, but some people look down on them for that, but they still have the traditional lineup as well. And I think that is also a very nice play for them. Their marketing is on top. Everything they're doing, I think, is very good and where it needs to be to take the brand into the future. And I can tell that they definitely understand us as watch geeks. And lastly, I'd like to give an honorable mention to Nomos for a few reasons. So I personally like the brand Nomos a whole lot. I think in the last 10 years, they've really exploded in terms of popularity, as well as just coming out with so many new models that they just didn't have 10, 15 years ago. And all of a sudden it just exploded and they have a lot of offerings, including some high end offerings in their Lux and Lambda categories, which are made out of precious metals. But now what I think they're really ahead of the curve on is pre-owned. So here at DelrayWatch.com, we sell predominantly pre-owned watches. And that's a segment that's growing every day. Look at the acquisitions and the mergers. Look at other companies out there. Look at the Turnos of the world. Look at the, the Booker, the Watch Finder. It goes on and on and on. Pre-owned is really becoming a really large market and it's past emerging in my opinion. And now Nomos, they didn't even really run a marketing campaign, but they have a refurbished slash pre-owned section of their website where they're testing out pre-owned. I think in my opinion that their pricing is a little bit high considering you can get deals on Nomos and the deals are going to be better than the price in the pre-owned section currently. But the fact that they're testing that out and mix that with their social media campaigns, which I think are very good because they mix real world photographs like Risty's typical Instagram pictures also with their stock product photos. I think that that really shows that they truly understand the watch collectors, but I just don't see it yet in their product offerings. I see a lot of the same thing, but little different tweaks. And I think that they probably should focus, in my opinion, a little bit more on kind of attracting watch collectors of the future, which are, I hate to say it, pointing in the direction of being a little bit less classic and more modern and trendy. But there is a lot of respect for me to kind of stay on their track and keep doing what, they, what they're doing and what they believe in. But I'd like to know, what do you think, guys? Do you think these brands understand collectors? Are there any other brands that you have in your collection or on the market that you believe truly understands us as watch collectors? Please leave in the comments below. I'd love to see it. Also, if you have not checked out my new YouTube channel, John P., link in the description below, as well as the card here. Please check that out. I talk about how Federico from Federico Talks Watches and I started DelrayWatch.com from pretty much nothing. And now we have a functioning, fully operational with a full staff here in South Florida team to buy, sell, and trade pre-owned watches. And thanks to you guys, the viewers. Thank you so much, guys. You have been chatting with John P. Ciao.